Are we ready to do either stability shoe or stable neutral shoe of the year? Yeah, yes. we could do that. All right. Are you two okay if I go first since I'm the one go that for typically needs more stability? I'm so going to actually- laugh. Remember, uh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, yeah. but remember when we were doing the ranking on stability episode and we oh, just yeah, kept waiting to disagree same. with each other no, and we were we like didn't. the same? I'm like yeah. totally waiting for this best of episode and we're usually polar opposites to be like this one, hey, this one, this one down might, the line. We might change here. So we'll have to see. But my stability right, shoe of see. the year is the Asics GT 2012. This shoe blew me away. I've got about 150 miles on my pair and I have just really, really love what they've done with this shoe. And I'm going to say it again that. Again, best writing, the new foam that's underfoot gives it a lot more, like not like a super shoe, but a good amount more training bounce. It's a shoe I've done long runs in really comfortably. And I personally, this year, between breaking my toe early in the year, um, just the amount of stuff that I've had to do, have it, you know, my wife giving birth to a child, all this stuff. It's been really hard for me to get back into doing long runs um, just because I haven't had the energy or the time. This has been one of the few shoes that I know I can do a long run in because I trust it enough. It's they've redesigned how they do stability. So the medial post is gone, but it's still more like geometric stability that actually provides a good amount of medial uh, support throughout. So it, it's just such a smooth ride. The the heel has gotten so much better. Could it still be a little bit better? Yes, but the way they've set up the geometry just collapses so nicely and essentially a crash pad, a la David's favorite, in the rear foot. Fits really nice, kind of borders between that like performance and daily trainer fit. So again, I've done workouts, long runs. I've done everything in this shoe, and I really got to say that the GT2000 series has really come forward as a top contender this year, and that's why this shoe is by far my favorite stability shoe of 2023. Well, dang, now I feel like I have to try it. Yeah, you should. I really like it. All right, who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Um, So I didn't get the GT2000, so that's not my pick. (laughs) (laughs) So they're actually, from a pure stability category, I didn't really get wowed by any specific models across this year. Like, there was a lot of good ones, but there wasn't really anything that I was like, yes, that is shoe of the year. Um. So I'm going to be a little bit more on the stable neutral category here, but they do market it as elements of stability and some light stability. Um, my pick is going to be now I got to remember which number it is on the model. I think it's seven. <laughs> yeah, it is. OK, uh, the Hoka Stinson seven. Ah, and so solid choice. Yeah. The, so all terrain type shoe. A lot of people think of it as specifically a trail shoe, but they market it as an all terrain. It's kind of like. But you had your finger up. I, 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 it, so we we talked about this briefly, but it's got the same elements that the Gavoida has. I forget what it's called. Gaviota. It's like an H. Yeah, sorry, I can't pronounce that. Um, it's got that like H stability thing that they talk about. Yeah, in yeah, there. that so H frame in there. Yeah, the H frame. Yeah. So I think this is actually based on what you and I talked about during our stability comparison. I think you're totally valid in adding this in the stability. But why do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's just really. Bill, I mean, okay, this is a chunky shoe. There's a lot going on here. So if you don't like heavy shoes, this is not going to be for you. But it, all those boxes we talk about, it checks. It's got a wide base. It's got good sole flaring. The upper is, it has a little bit of stretch fit. But again, this is kind of like an all-terrain. Like there's, that thing locks down. It's meant to be able to tackle trails too. And it's a very trustworthy platform. Um, good traction from the lugs. And then that H frame underneath, it's set up almost like you have two separate crash pads where you kind of have like kind of that firmness that comes here. If you're listeners, I'm basically looking at the heel here and along the medial and lateral aspect, there's kind of like a firmer piece of foam in there. And then there's like a cutout kind of underneath that calcaneus and underneath the forefoot. And I might have the uh, anthropometrics of this a little bit off, you know, from what it like exactly is, but that's essentially what it comes down to is that there's a little bit of give here and a little bit of give here. And there's a little bit of rigidity elsewhere, kind of giving you some guidance and keeping you centered. Uh, So the overall ride, I mean, it's, it's plush and protective, but it's still on the firmer side. It's an EVA based shoe. So I feel like even though it's pretty high up, what is like 42 millimeters of stack? Is that? Oh, I think it's, it's above that. Yeah. Oh no! Like, wait, this one's like forty-seven. Yeah, isn't it? it's forty-six, forty-seven. It's yeah, massive. I don't yeah. know which which one am I thinking of? It's forty-two. Yeah, no, it's forty-seven. Uh, You're right. This yeah. thing's high up. Yeah, 
does not feel like 47 though. I feel like it actually, like they do a good job of stabilizing 47 millimeters yeah. of foam. That's a lot of foam to work yeah. with. So uh, I think they did a great job. They have good, like even the sidewalls, the soul flare and the traction, like everything checks those boxes. And if you don't mind the shoe being over 11 ounces, <laughs> or was it 12? It's 11, right? It's, it's under 12, I think. I don't remember. That's a good question. Yeah, but... I should have looked that one up before calling yeah. it out. Um, I would also I would add that I definitely think north of yeah. 11, maybe north of 12. <laughs> yeah. I'd also add that it's by far one of the most stable trail shoes. out. It's a road trail shoe, technically, correct? Yeah, it's it's yeah. like an all-terrain yeah, ETR all -terrain. or whatever. Yeah. It's by far the most stable trail shoe. And people often ask, like, hey, what's is there any stability trail shoes? And honestly, I can't, there's not a ton out in the market. I mean, the A6 Trabuco used to have a medial post, and I haven't tried it recently, and I don't know if that's still present, but this is actually a great option if you truly need stability on trail. So I think it's that's awesome. So Andrea, you ready? I'm ready. So um, right. for listeners who don't know, main stability, like traditional stability, mm -hmm. don't get along. Right. Um, no one sends me stability shoes because they have been told <laughs> that I will not like them. But um, I there are tons of stable neutral shoes that I like. So my choice, which I mentioned before, is the Asics Nova Blast 4. And, you know, we talk a lot about how stability for one person is different than stability for another person. So it depends on your biomechanics. It depends on any specific issues you have with strength, mobility, ligamentous laxity. So many factors go into what stable means for an individual. So for me, I've sprained my ankles. Who knows how many times I grew up playing basketball, had a really bad sprain a few years ago in a trail race. So, and I land on my lateral midfoot. So I need shoes that basically helped me to not land too far laterally. And the Nova Blast 4 does a great job of that because of how the forefoot sole flare is oriented. I don't know if you can see in the video, but on the lateral side, the sole flare extends a little further posteriorly than on the medial side. So it really corresponds nicely to where I land. And I feel like it gives me, like I land at the widest part of the shoe. And the other thing that I really like about this shoe is unlike a lot of Asics shoes where the uh, forefoot rocker starts really early, the forefoot rocker starts a little later in this shoe. So it actually gives me time to land and roll forward before hitting that rocker. Shoes like the Magic Speed, which I actually like, but the forefoot rocker starts so early, it feels like I just land and then boom, like the rocker pushes me forward. And that's okay when I'm running fast, but when I'm running slower, it just, it feels very unstable for me. So the main thing that I really like about this year regarding uh, stability is the design of the forefoot sole flare. But the other thing that's really great about this shoe is just how well the upper fits. They've really integrated the tongue nicely with the upper, and it just really locks down your midfoot nicely. Didn't have any issues with heel slippage or any irritation from the laces or the tongue. So, yeah, this this shoe, I've done a lot of like, you know, 45 minute to hour runs on it. But I am definitely going to use it on some easier long runs because I think it'll be quite comfortable for that. The other I thing I want to say. That. Yeah. Have you, yeah, I've done a 20 mile or yours? It. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention about this shoe, which has maybe some to do with stability, but more so just how it performs. For people who land further forward, you know, you could have a shoe that's like 35 millimeters in the heel, but if it's an eight or 10 millimeter drop, the forefoot really isn't that cushioned. But because this shoe for women, it's 40 and a half in the heel, 32.5 in the forefoot, I still get a ton of cushion where I land. And the midsole in this shoe is not super soft, like it has a little bit of give, but it's definitely quite protective. So it just, it is so comfortable to run in. And it actually feels like it gives me the forefoot cushioning that I'm looking for. So definitely my choice for stable neutral and my runner up for trainer of the year. So I'm very happy I got the shoe to test. Sweet. All right. Those are great. So we're ready for some runner ups. Oh, for stability? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. 
So I'm going to sh- I know this is kind of more in the racing realm, but it is a stability shoe. So I got to give Brooks a <laughs> shout out for the Hyperion GTS. I have well over 100 miles in my pair and it is not a super shoe. The foam is not super. It is not maximal stack height, but I feel like my love for this is similar to Andrea's love for the uh, Hyperion Max, where like for me, like I, I thrived years ago. when We had all these like I was I came in at the very tail end of when they actually had stability racing shoes. And then those all disappeared, right? The kind of people kind of went the minimalist route. Then they went maximalist and all that got left behind. So this is one of the this is the lightest stability shoe that I know of on the market right now is it aggressive no it's just got sidewalls on the medial and lateral side that's it it's got a wider base but it's still a shoe that can go faster which i really really like this and the tempest the tempest was 2022 this and the tempest have kind of been go-to shoes for me again especially this year where i've started to slowly try to do more workouts in non-super shoes just to kind of balance things out so i really like where brooks is going with this is there still some stuff i'd like to see i need to make this a little bit more super Yes, I would like to see that, but I got to give props and runner up to the Hyperion GTS for both the durability, which has been phenomenal, as well as just a really fun ride that I keep reaching for. So that is my runner up stability shoe of the year. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll piggyback off of that one. Mine is the Hyperion GTS. That's why I was oh, laughing wow. when you pulled wow. it out. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I, uh, we haven't talked about this shoe. I feel like we got to talk about this. Now. Yeah, I feel yeah. like we need to talk about that one more. Um, it's on the wall. I don't have it to hold, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's simple in a lot of the ways that I'd like to see, especially with how like crazy a lot of these shoes are getting. And it's, and it's stable, right? Like it's simple, but it's stable. It's lightweight. You can kind of do a little bit of everything with it. And I give them some props because there really isn't any shoes in that like lightweight stability category for those that need it. And so almost just for like kind of prop points there, they, it kind of got boosted up because it's unique. And, um, but those guide rails, you feel them. I mean, we got yeah. the Hyperion and the Hyperion GTS and I noticed the difference. Yeah. You know, very and different. yeah. Yeah, like I feel like that's one of those ones. And is it the most stable thing on the planet? No, but it's not meant to be. And for those that need a little bit, like, but still want to be able to turn over and do things, I think that's a great option from a versatility standpoint. So, um, yeah, that's why I was honestly, if it wasn't for the Stinson, that was probably going to be my stability pick of the year. Wow. Um, then the Stinson kind of wowed me late in the year, too. So. Well, my runner-up pick is a shoe that I didn't love, but I think did stable neutral so well that it's worth mentioning, and that's the Brooks Ghost Max. I don't have it up here with me right now. but That's not a bad one. That's a good one. Yeah, I didn't think about that one. Yeah, You know, they they made that shoe. It's got a super wide base. It's got a really well-fitting upper. Um, I believe it's six millimeter drop, which I liked. I found it just a little stiff. Like, I actually found that... It kept me too far lateral when I ran, and I just it that doesn't work well for me. But I think it's well done because one, it's going to work for people who use orthotics. Two, it's going to work for people who typically need more stability, like maybe people who in the past have needed a medial post. They might be able to get away with running in the Ghost Max, um, and it'll work for more neutral runners who just want a shoe that's a little more grounded. So that would be my runner up, even though it wasn't one of my tops for the year. Speaking of which, not to keep adding things, I know we're doing one top one, one runner up. <laughs> oh, it's your category. <laughs> it's a stability. We yeah. plan yeah. kind of gets I, the green light there. <laughs> I, I have to give a shout out in terms of the most stable neutral shoe for me. I don't have my pair because my father-in-law needed them more than me in terms of his feet were hurting. And I was like, hey, we're the same size. So I'm like, he needs something for work. And I'm like, let me give you these. But the Saucony Echelon 9 blew my thoughts about so- about stable neutral out of the water. And I am probably going to purchase another pair because they're so comfortable. I use that shoe as wide enough that when I broke my toe early in the year, it was rocket enough that- and stable enough that it worked well. And I was still running on a broken toe. Um, probably not the smartest thing, and I would not suggest that to anyone, but that shoe was phenomenal and definitely one of my top shoes of the year. Not enough to get like daily trainer of the year, but it was a phenomenal shoe. So from a stable, stable, neutral standpoint, I would really, really, really give props to the Saucony Echelon 9. Also as a shoe that can take orthotics super well as I actually went out of my way. And a big thank you to Snail's Pace for letting me come down and 
bring a shoe in and try to put a bunch of orthotics in there because I usually don't use orthotics. I usually, to be <laughs> honest, will take foam pads and create my own arch support in the on the insoles to do that. And that's a, a, a episode that I'll upload at some point, how to edit your shoes. But again, both the Ghost Max and the Echelon 9 are really awesome shoes. And I actually, Andrew, I had the same thing with the Ghost Max where it pushed me too lateral and I kept getting IT band stuff. And I was like, why am I? And so I actually videotaped myself and found myself getting like overcorrected. I'm like, oh, that's that's why I got it. So yeah. both very awesome stable shoes, both great options for people because I feel like the previous like orthotic friendly shoes, no offense, they sucked. They were just stiff, uncomfortable, and they're like, people i'm like yeah this is the best when i worked in running stores i'm like this is the best we got like they're like oh this feels like terrible i'm like yeah though this is what's gonna work and they're like okay but now you've got some really great options that even people that don't need orthotics like you've got some really awesome stable neutral stuff out there so shout out to both socket and brooks for some really good stable neutral stuff out there 